Nikosi Perry has entered the transfer portal. Let's talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Nikosi Perry, who has entered the transfer portal for the second time in two months. And the first time, it felt like, yes, this was a natural progression for how things should go. Nikosi Perry is going to graduate in May, and he has an opportunity to transfer and be eligible to play right away wherever it is he chooses to go. And at the time, it felt like the Miami coaching staff was going to help him accomplish that too. Then he pulled out, and we found out that Tate Martell basically hadn't been a part of Miami football since November, is also looking to transfer once again. And we'll be real interested to find out where that is exactly because his skill set is still very much there, and he was a dude in high school, and when he committed to a and it felt kind of, eh, I don't know, maybe Jimbo Fisher and he can make something happen, but when he committed to Ohio State, it felt like a natural fit because at the time, they were still running Urban Meyer's basketball on grass, which is what propelled Tate Martell to such heights at Bishop Gorman being a national Gatorade player of the year. Now with Nikosi Perry back in the portal, Tate Martell in the portal, the guys that are on the depth chart at Miami include Peyton Machota, Tyler Van Dyke, and Jake Garcia, along with De'Ara King. Now, De'Ara King is rehabbing from what is believed to be a blown ACL, and the guys coming in relief of him didn't look all that good. They end up signing a top 50 recruit in Jake Garcia, who I believe has the best opportunity to compete with De'Ara King for that job, but if De'Ara King is healthy, it's his job, right? I'm not so concerned about Nkosi Perry in this instance as I am just kind of wondering about the guys behind De'Ara King because Garcia played at four different high schools in four years, and in a pandemic and a natural disaster, he and his parents made the really interesting decision to not only move across country to Georgia – to be eligible to play, one of them had to live there with him, which means that his father, Randy, and his mother, Yvonne, had to legally separate so that Jake Garcia could play his senior year of football. He was going to do that at Valdosta. Wasn't working out there. He ends up at Loganville playing for powerhouse Grayson. And then, of course, signing with Miami. I don't know what kind of player Jake Garcia could be for Miami. All I know is that the man has been traveling and more or less making it happen wherever he goes. Now, I don't have anything against dudes that transfer multiple times, but coaches tend to, right? They tend to take it as a bad sign. I was looking over at baseball, and it happens more often than not, right? Like Bryce Harper basically played for almost everybody, and everybody knows that Bryce Harper is one of the best baseball players in the world, period, right? He's got a World Series ring, and he goes from catcher to the outfield, got big as house, starts hitting dingers. Jake Garcia could come in and be good with Miami. I'm more interested in De'Aaron King in 21 than I am him, but I think that it's a sign, something in particular, that Garcia signed and Nikosi Perry wants to go. I also look at Peyton, I look at Tyler, and I say, if you guys want to go into the portal, I would get it. But those would have been the guys that I expected to go before Nikosi Perry. But we've seen Nikosi Perry. We have tape of Nikosi Perry. We know what Nikosi Perry's ceiling is. Right now, finding out what Jake Garcia's ceiling is is even more interesting to me because Miami has been in a constant rebuild mode, but they're getting better each year. Like last year, they were better than I thought they might be. De'Aaron King was a big part of that. If they had better receivers, which is something I thought, you know, they were the only team in the country that could say legitimately, they probably have a better season. I mean, Brevin Jordan was doing all sorts of work for De'Aaron King. If you had the kind of threat that Charleston Rambo provides them this year, last year, you're probably okay. Now, OU fans would tell you that they believe that Charleston Rambo dropped too, uh, Charleston Rambo dropped too many passes 
to be seen as a credible deep threat anymore. I'm just saying OU fans are kind of salty. I think Charleston Rambo's a dude, and that man can absolutely positively play. And Miami has done such a good job of recruiting its area and really trying to raise up the guys that are on their depth chart in addition to going into the portal more often than not to kind of rebuild on the fly with like Bubba Bolden last year and Jalen Phillips last year and Quincy Roche last year. And that would have been a lot of fun to see with Gregory Rousseau. We didn't get to see that, obviously. I don't know that they're going to compete for an ACC championship, but I put them in the same category as North Carolina having an opportunity to face Clemson in that ACC championship. As I believe that Clemson is going to win another ACC championship because when it comes to the conferences, nothing has been more clockwork than Clemson winning the ACC and Oklahoma winning the Big 12. But you throw Joey Garcia into the mix, you make that dude, I guess, a little bit bigger than he might be to give De'Ara King just something to think about, and then you ride De'Ara King into 21. I don't know where the natural landing spot is for Nikozi Perry, though. Like, that's the problem here. The last cycle, we had nearly 2,000 guys go into the transfer portal, and we're beginning to see how it works, right? If you are a top recruit, four-star, five-star guy that has no real tape, you're more likely to find a landing spot. If you are not, you're less likely to find a landing spot. It's also about fit, and it's also about what the need is because we now have more guys going into the portal than can come out, but I believe that that is also their decision. I want to see the portal, like, get bigger. I want to see one-time transfers. And if you go into the portal and you don't come out, that's a decision that you made, right? I think to say that you're trying to protect the kids in the transfer portal or by limiting them is to be patriarchal, and that ain't your job, right? That No, your job is, is to coach football or to watch football. It is not to tell the kid what he can or cannot do. You can advise them, but it's their decision, and I want to see more of them take that opportunity because I think we're going to get closer to something like egalitarian and a little bit more of control for a player in a situation where players don't have a whole hell of a lot of control. I got millionaire coaches telling kids what they should and shouldn't do because it's good for the coach and it's good for their program. Nobody seems to see that conflict of interest. You also need to remember that parents are stakeholders in these kids, and these kids aren't making decisions by themselves. You know, I, I take a look at how people are trying to dad these kids, and I'm going, you realize how – you're crippling them for life ahead. You realize that you don't know everything and you don't know everything about these players and their lives and what they feel is best for them at the time. If they come to regret that decision, it's still a decision that they get to make and not one you get to make. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.